The future of transportation has arrived and it'll be nothing like the movie Fast and Furious. There will be daytime driving, people will obey the traffic lights, and the streets will not be confiscated by a bunch of street punks. Today's ETF battles is a quadruple header between four transportation ETFs focused on electric vehicles, self-driving technology, and other futuristic stuff. It's a four-header between the iShares, Spiders, Global X, and Crane Shares. So who wins the battle? Find out right after this. Welcome to ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. Great to see you again. The future of transportation is here. And we know what kind of car that Bo Bandit and the Dukes of Hazard boys would drive, but what kind of car would the Jetsons drive? See, that's the real smell test here that I think brings us closer to where the future of transportation is probably heading. Less fumes, more software, more automation, and cars with instant torque, and maybe even one or two flying taxis. Now, if you're enjoying ETF battles, be sure to hit the like button. And please send us your ETF battle requests in the comment section below. Give us your ETF ticker symbols. That's your homework assignment. You give us those tickers. We'll take a look at them again in the comment section below or on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide. If you're unable to watch a show, you can also listen to it. It's available on all major podcasting platforms. So today's showdown is another audience requested matchup. This time from D Glove, it's a quadruple header between DRIV. IDRV, hail like Hail Mary, and cars like the movie, but with a K. Helping us to judge today's matchup, we've got Eric Balchunas, Senior ETF Analyst at Bloomberg, and Mike Akins, Founding Partner at ETF Action. Judges, welcome back. It's great to see you. Good to see you, Ron. Thanks for having me. Great to be here, Ron. So we've got our four battle categories, cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and then the mystery category, where you can pick that single factor or multiple factors to make your final determination of which of these ETFs jump out at you. And then at the end of the show, we're going to declare an overall final winner. I've got the scorekeeping chores, and so I'll be keeping a running a tally of your decisions in each of these categories. So let's get kicked off with the first category, which is cost. Eric, please get us started. Sure. So, you know, again, when you're going into a thematic area, Cost is a little less important um, because your performance differential and the holdings that powers that performance is probably going to completely blow away any little you know uh, needling in the expense ratio. That matters more to me in the vanilla beta space. But anyhow, I think uh, this is going to be clearly a two-way tie between iDrive and Hail, which are 47 and 45 bits respectively. Um, Drive, the Global X one is 68 and Cars the crane shares is the most expensive at 72. So if you're going on a expense ratio basis, I think you go iDrive or Hail, and then you might even lean to iDrive because it's got a lower spread, uh, which is four basis points. Drive also is low at three. So I guess if we add it up, it's iDrive by a hair if we include the spread. But really, Hail could also be given the uh, – I could also give it to Hail here, but I got to pick one. I'll go iDrive. Okay. I got you down for iDrive. Thank you very much, Eric. And uh, Mike, you're up next in terms of uh, cost. How do you see it? I really can't add much to what Eric said there. I, I, Hale and iDrive are the cheapest, um, but exposure is where you want to look when the thematic space, um, what companies you actually own. There's some significant differences that we'll talk about as we go along in this show, I'm sure. Um, so it's really all about what best fits your vision of what is EV and what is self-driving and that vision according to these four ETFs is very different. So I'll just say, go with the Eric Hale and I drive with the two cheapest and leave it at that. All right. That takes us next to the exposure strategy category and Mike, break it down for us. Which of these four ETFs really stands out? Where to begin? Well, let's just start by painting the picture. Um, these four ETFs hold 225 unique companies. Um, of those 225 unique companies, 166 of them are just held in one out of the four. Six names are held in four out of the four. So 
you know, your vision versus my vision versus iShares versus Global X's vision of what is an electric vehicle or what is autonomous driving are clearly very, very different. So to that extent, when I look to evaluate these companies, I'm looking for a few things. Um, I'm looking for one commonality. So where is, you know, which of these ETFs tend to hold the greatest proportion of those companies where there's agreement, being those kind of six names that are held in all four or the additional 17 names that are held in three out of the four. And in my view, iDrive and Drive provide the exposure really most, the highest exposure to those, those names. Um, for what it's worth, you know, those names are uh, Tesla, uh, uh, Xping, Neo, um, are the three electric car makers that are in those three out of the six. And there's a couple other random companies, a uh, semiconductor company, a thermo generation company, which is really an interesting conversation for, a, for another day. But to the extent of looking at exposure, looking at strategy, I look at iDrive and Drive as providing the best combination of concentration into that broad definition of autonomous vehicle or electric vehicle, as well as um, still getting you enough exposure to what you wouldn't hold in, in other companies. If I had to pick between the two, I'd give it to Global X's uh, DRIV drive. Okay. Thank you very much, Mike. Got you down for DRIV and appreciate the additional analysis there. Eric, how do you see it in terms of exposure strategy in today's quadruple header? Yeah, I think Mike made some great points here, uh, especially with Tesla and NEO. Um, you know, if you just do a quick sniff test of the top holdings, I got to say, I, I find drive and iDrive a little annoying. Um, it's got that fang thing going on where it's like Google, Microsoft, Apple in the top five. Um, I already own those stocks and I own a lot of them. I think that would be the natural reaction. And then how much revenue is Apple getting from autonomous vehicles or, or electric vehicles even? Um I don't like that. So I, I'm, I'm just killing drive and I drive uh, because of that. Um, cars and hail to me are uh, a little more exotic. And in the theme category, I like that. So for example, cars, the top two of the top three are Tesla and Neo. Um, cars also is going to go and give you a little more um, in the basic materials. So there's, it looks like there's going to be some lithium mining companies in there. Um, and so you're getting a little broader there. And cars also is going to go uh, less U.S. It's by far the lowest in terms of U.S. exposure. That's good or bad. I don't know. But I think uh, I'm going to go cars because of that exoticness. I like the global aspect. I like the fact that uh, it doesn't um, hold – like it doesn't have that fang thing going on in, in the name. I like that it's one of the most volatile of the four. Um, so – that's, I think, what I would choose, although it's it's really tough. Um, what Mike alluded to is you really got to look through these holdings and, and just decide for yourself. Um, it's a very subjective thing. So I try to explain my rationale for my subjective opinion, which is that when I go for themes, I, I want pure hot sauce. And Cars has a 98% active share to the S&P. Drive and iDrive, it's more like 80 to 85%. It's still high. But it's not like arc level high, which cars delivers. Well, that's excellent analysis. Thank you, Eric. And now we shift to performance. So, Eric, how do you see it in terms of performance between these four ETFs? Cars is doing the best over the past three months um, and year to date, although it's close. Hale is not not doing that well. Um, it, I drive, drive. They're, look, if I look year to date, they're all up 16, 14, 17, and then Hale is up nothing. Um, so I would call it a three-way tie, but I suppose I'd have to go with cars simply because it's up by a little more. Um, and again, I, I just caution people, you will get more volatility with, with cars. So it's likely to be leading or lagging um, you know, any given year because of that concentration and the uh, uh, volatility that it brings. And there's one more stat I want to throw out here uh, about that one which is the percentage of holdings in the top 10 that are the top 10. And that's also cars for the win there at 44%. So again, you're getting a very Kathy Woodish kind of ETF here. 
Um, and that's probably why the performance was a little better, but that could, it could one year be the worst because of that same reason. Very good. I got you down for cars on performance. Uh, Mike, how do you see it in this quadruple header in terms of performance? Yeah, I mean, I would put it down to drive and cars. Um, you know, if you look at the year to date number, cars and drives are base, basically tied at 17%. One year drives beating it out by about 7%, but then you flip that around on the three year and cars is crushing everybody. Um, at up compounded rate of 31.5% uh, drive at 26.34. So that's really that explosion in those names. Um, I struggle with cars a little bit, um, mainly because of what Eric alluded to, um, that hot sauce. In this case, that hot sauce is coming from China and I struggle with that. Um, I get my hot sauce from from South America. You prefer <laughs> uh, uh, jalapenos, right? <laughs> yes, I do. Um, it's a different type of, of spiciness that I'm currently looking for in my portfolio. So just thinking about it from a forward-looking perspective here, I'm going to go stick with drive as, as my winner. Though I do think uh, uh, you know Eric makes excellent points about the active share. Um, you know, one last comment on that and, I bring this up. I had a client ask the other day. Um, I was talking about, you know, active share and using thematics and not wanting to get the same portfolios. And he's like, yeah, but he's like, if I add too many portfolios that don't own Apple and Google and some of the largest names, Microsoft, aren't I indirectly underweighting those names overall in my portfolio? And to be completely honest, I hadn't thought about it that way before. Um, I still like the highest, the high active share with thematics because you want to add difference to your portfolio. But there's something to be said that there's a reason Google and Apple and some of these fang names find themselves across so many themes. And if you're not careful, you can end up getting significantly underweight through adding things that don't hold them. Um, so it's just some, some different way to think about it, which has not been with my normal way of, of discussing these products. Um, long-winded answer. I'm going with drive um, because I like it hot, but not that kind of hot. Excellent. Thank you for your culinary uh, culinary take on that too. In terms of hot sauce, that was good. Goldilocks. <laughs> He's Goldilocks. He's Very Goldilocks good. hot sauce. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. So I got you down for drive on your performance. Thank you very much, Mike. Now we shift to the mystery battle category where our judges get to pick that single factor or multiple factors to make their arguments. So what is your mystery battle category, Mike, and who wins it? So this is a tough one for me. I, I like a lot of the names in these portfolios. I think uh, there's very little doubt arguing that EVs are the future of the, the roads. Um, when that happens, I'm not sure. But my my wild card on this theme is going to be the fact that you know, over the last year and a half, it's gone from being a Tesla story, a just a Tesla story and an X-Ping story and a Neo story and a, um, whatnot, you know, just some of your pure electric vehicle names to being an entire industry story, right? Everybody is basically making commitments by 2030 that the majority of their fleets will be electric vehicles. And I think that changes the dynamic here um, for the story of electric vehicles. So I think it becomes more of a broader clean energy. And I think a lot of the clean energy ETFs actually provide plenty of exposure to these names already. So I think this is an example of a theme that has played out a little bit right now. Um, and because of the, uh, the mainstream nature of where EVs is going, I think we've lost some of that, that juice that you could have expected in the true EV space. And I think you might want to think going broader backing out to, to a clean energy like, a, you know, an eye clean or something of like, there's a lot of clean energy strategies in the marketplace. So I think the, my mystery factor is who's not electric vehicle now. And that, that kind of um, changes the dynamic of thinking through to these portfolios, in my opinion, when it comes to adding um, these types of thematics to an overall portfolio, I think you might be getting enough exposure, staying broader to, to a clean energy or something of the of the like. Okay, very good. And so I've got no winner. <laughs> so I've got no winner. It's just a broad um, observation with respect to EVs and autonomous vehicles. Okay, very good. And that it, you know is reminiscent too of the dot com phase, right? Where you know it was novel at one point in history to have a dot com after your company name, and then 
everyone was forced to be in the internet business, which is where we're at today. So good takes. And now we shift to Eric in terms of your mystery battle category. What is it and who wins it? So in this category, I'm going to focus on a more holistic view of of electric vehicles. And so that would be mining. Um, looking at the miners exposure of these three, and there's really only two, the two highest are cars and drive. They have 7% and 8% miners. Um, and then chemicals, um, you know, dry, uh, cars has 13% chemical makers and drive has 6.3%. Um, and the semiconductors is also limited. Um, I drive has a ton of semiconductors. I, you know, it's very complicated because a lot of these themes are taking major sector bets and industry bets, but I suppose after watching lithium and especially recently watching um, the real earth, the rare earth metals ETF and how important places like China and Afghanistan are in terms of supplying those metals and the miners, I want those in this ETF. And again, that's why I think cars tends to take you overseas uh, maybe more than, than Mike likes. I'm actually okay with the China hot sauce um, if, if it serves my goal. Um, drive is very well-rounded. I, I would say that I prefer cars, but drive also, I think, has a lot of mining and chemicals and some of the stuff that, you know, you getting your hands dirty, the stuff that, the dirty part of electric vehicles, the stuff that has to come out of the ground and, and put together uh, that, that when, you know, the final product is all pretty, um, but a lot has to happen for that to get there. And I like that cars really goes there um, to the point where it's really starting the theme from when they're drilling in the earth. Excellent. Thank you very much, Eric. I got you down for cars now. We shift to the part of the show where our judges get to pick their overall battle winner. And this has been a hotly contested quadruple header. My scorecard almost looks like a split decision, but we're going to have to wait and see what our judges come up with. But Eric, give us your overall battle winner in today's showdown. So it's going to seem like Brendan Ahern of Crane Shares paid me off today, um, but <laughs> I'm going double Crane Shares. And that's weird because I don't even think about Crane Shares all that much. I mean, K-Web's been in the news lately, and I think Brendan's a great guy. Um, in fact, most of the, the fund we like really like of theirs is their inclusion ETF. Um, it like, solves a problem, helps you get ahead of that. Um, but I got to give it to cars. Um, I'm not afraid of the China hot sauce, although I, I respect Mike's feeling on that um you get the chinese government with that with that play and that's just the way it is but again i really like opening up my holdings of a theme etf and not seeing the fang names um i i understand what that guy was saying about that now i'm underweight that's interesting i'll have to just contemplate that for a while but w when we think of the theme etfs we um prefer that they go and go for more pure play stocks um because again what percentage of the fang names do they get, does this uh, industry, uh, what percentage of the revenue comes from this industry? It's got to be tiny. Um, so what's the point? Um, I can see why an advisor might like it because be less volatile. So if you're an advisor worried about having to have uncomfortable conversations with a client, I think uh, driver, I drive is probably better. More US, it's not going to move around as much. But again, um, if your goal is to spice it up, as long as you can handle the China stuff, <laughs> I'm going cars. Double double header crane shares. Excellent. Thank you very much. I got you down for cars. Mike, your final opportunity to weigh in on your overall battle winner. Well, my winner is hands down in the space, has been for a while as drive, DRIV. I like its broad broader exposure, yet concentrated in the sense that it does have high active share to the broader market. Um, I will say Eric's turned me a little bit. Um, he's made some great points about cars. Usually I come into this pretty straight, um, not going to shift, though I still can't, I can't handle the hot sauce for cars at 38% China. So for me, drive is still the winner, though I think he makes some great points about um, getting dirty with, with the electric vehicles, getting in and getting into the, the materials that are supplying that. Uh, luckily, um, I can't lie and say that I thought about it beforehand. Drive does have a little bit of that allocation too, so I can stay strong with my drive as my overall winner. But good points on on cars from Eric today, and I have to give my hat tip to him on that. Excellent. Well, great job to both of our judges for raising some great points. And my battle scorecard is a split decision with Mike choosing drive 
and liking its uh, you know broader exposure, less volatility. Eric, of course, going the other way with cars, preferring that super high active share, 98% relative to S&P 500, prefers also the theme purity. It's Kathy Woodian, active share. I'm going to use her as an adjective, if that's okay. And for the record, a China ETF has 100% active share versus SPY, so. Excellent. <laughs> well, <laughs> Touché. Touché. <laughs> well, all I know is Heinrich Fisker better deliver my ocean SUV on time or I'll be back to taking the city bus. That's all I know. And actually, maybe I could bum a ride from one of our judges if the car doesn't arrive. So we'll have to see. Next stop, Trader Joe's. Anyway, judges, illustrious job at uh, breaking down today's quadruple header. Uh, each of you had solid takes. And for our audience, uh, at the very least, if you're looking at investing in the future of transportation, I think uh, what we've given you is an excellent starting point for further research and investment. Well, that does it for today's uh, ETF battles. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Be sure to hit the like button as well as post us your comments. Let us know uh, what you think about the show. You can also send us any ETF battle requests that you'd like us to look at and consider for upcoming episodes. Be sure to give us your ticker symbols. Thanks for watching. I'm Ron DeLegge. We'll see you next time.